As uh, Toby has demonstrated in Spider-Man 3, there's always a lot going on right here. We all knew as we watched Toby, Andrew, and Tom team up to take on the villains at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home that there needed to be action figures behind virtually all three. And even though we were already kind of in the weeds of getting a lot of Tom figures from the MCU, Toby and Andrew, I mean, come on. Especially for those of us that missed a good chunk of some of those movie lines from 2002, 2004, 2012 respectively, the companies need to jump on that. And even though we're getting some of the main staple ones from Hasbro any day now, any day now whenever they're ready, at least in individual releases, other companies that are beholden to the license have actually jumped the gun and virtually already delivered. And one of those is ASH Figuarts slash Tamashii Nation slash Bandai, whatever their goddamn name is these days. But anyways, they have finally released the first of the trio via, of course, like I said, some complications with the latter releases of Andrew and Tom. But now we got the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, a.k.a the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from ASH Figuarts. And he was delivered in a much more minimalist box than I was expecting from Figuarts. In fact, it's very plain and small enough to have fit in my bail box. And that was utterly surprising because most of the time when I've bought figure, Figuarts figures in the past, they've always come in a very showy box that comes with an awful lot of accessories. And this one was a bit more simplistic, straightforward, very compact, but it also raised a little bit of a slight concern that I would have eventually but we'll get to that portion when we talk about accessories. For now, as you can plainly see, this is most definitely the Tobey Maguire Raimi version of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man that showed up in No Way Home specifically because you can definitely tell that from the scale and actual proportions of the body physique. <laughs> Not to slam my man Toby here, but you can definitely tell that this is the version that showed up in No Way Home. He is in no way, shape, or form going to be the exact... Uh, version of the character from the Raimi trilogy and they actually model that to scale so you'll notice that he's not necessarily the bulkiest of the Spideys but at the same time he's still fit for the you know version of the character that he was interpreting the youth pastor if you will from that movie and Figuarts was able to replicate that body sculpt very accurately throughout while at the same time remain retaining an awful lot of the details that made the Raimi suit a very nostalgic piece of Spider-Man mythology. From the 3D web printing to the honeycomb cells kind of protruding or at least etching throughout the blue parts of the suit as well as the red. And some people may feel a little ways from one side to another about how they feel about the silver paint decals going alongside the webbings. That's, I always feel, has always been a bit of a uh, compromise that a lot of toy manufacturers needed to do in order to make the webbing pop out a little bit more because Toby's suit has always had that 3D printed webbing that is technically black, but because of the material that it's made out of, whenever it kind of reflects in the light, it always appears somewhat silver. And almost every action figure company from the 6 and stuff like this, or Hasbro, to that of even Hot Toys, they often go for a slightly silver shade to make sure that it pops a little bit more and it's a much more distinguishable looking suit than that of Andrew or Tom's. And there's no exception here, even the spider symbol here in the middle is decked out in a slightly silver opaque kind of color, but still the way that it's sculpted and etched in there is beautiful. And then the blue is also a bit more muted to fit alongside the Raimi suit because often that blue always came off as a little bit of a darker blue. It's a little darker than it showed up in Spider-Man two or three but it kind of resembles that of the first movies but what is definitely taken from the second and third movie is the spider symbol here on the back that is beautifully etched in there and replicated and that's the thing about figure arts is that even though you are getting a six inch scale figure and it kind of puts into question as to whether or not it's worth spending a whole whopping 90 ish or so dollars on a figure of this scale and size it's really in those details it's making sure that you're getting the premium quality for the sculpting and the paint and nothing Nothing looks splotchy, nothing looks rushed out of production, everything feels very fine-tuned. And even the build quality of said plastic feels fine. I mean, I, I understand it feels a little a little floaty, a little weightless, and trust me, I've had instances like that before with figure arts figures, but it is actually rather durable. This guy actually kind of fell off my table already once, expecting there to be a scratch on the guy, and thankfully, he is safe and sound. And that build quality and the actual sculpting and kind of... 
Attention to the details of making sure that all of this feels pretty pristine and matches that price point is really what you get for figure arts. Even though I do feel that pulling him right out of the box and even after toying with him for a number of days, I still feel like the only area that does kind of bother me in terms of proportioning and scale are the legs. They do feel, the word that comes to mind is frumpy. There's something frumpy-ish about the way that the legs are. And I understand that this is, again, meant to replicate the Toby we got in No Way Home that is supposed to be middle-aged and not necessarily at his prime in terms of physical capacities. But still, yeah, I think he could have been used an extra millimeter on the legs to make sure that he's proportioned right. Maybe they were doing this on purpose so that he can scale well for the future releases of the Andrew and Tom figures. But for the most part, I can definitely see how this could bother me, uh, bother some people because it did kind of uh, irk me a little bit pulling him out of the box but grew on me over time. The one area that I do think that figure arts kind of fumbled the ball as far as pain applications are the elbows. You can kind of see right there that the elbow joints are not color coded correctly and it does kind of bother a little bit of my OCD there to see that the top half of the joint is not painted accordingly with the red of the suit so that does stand out a little bit. But as far as actually locking down the sculpting of the chest, the back, the boots, and then of course that head, which doesn't look too oval, it actually looks proportioned just right. The eyes, the lenses are actually placed on the right area of the mask and they're color coded in. In fact, I would even argue better than that in the movie. A lot of people were bothered by the fact that he has white eyes as opposed to the oakly, silverish eyes. And I feel like here, figure arts kind of nailed a slight in between. Here on camera, they might come off as white, but in person, they do have a little bit of a silver tinge when reflected in the light. And therefore, in person, this guy comes alive a lot better than I was giving him credit for in some of the pictures or in neutral positions such as this. And he becomes even more alive when you finally get him into some more dynamic poses thanks to the articulation, which is where virtually the back half of that $90 price point comes into play. And I would even go as far as to say it surpasses the likes of Marvel Legends, even McFarlane Toys, and really why you're paying the big bucks towards companies like Mafex or ASH Figure Arts. As you can see here towards the top, you actually have two joints, one at the top of the neck and then one at the bottom that allows the head to fully rotate 360 degrees either at the top or at the bottom, as well as being able to tilt downwards all the way like so upwards like that and then of course side to side and you have just an awful lot of flexibility to work different kinds of emotions through the head when he has the masked head on just to kind of put that little asterisk there again we'll cover more later on then we get to the arms where in the shoulders things get immensely interesting because this is where sh figure arts is able to separate themselves from the rest of the pack and you have full rotation of the arms 360 degrees vertically as well as extension towards the sides via a ball joint here at the top of the shoulder. The only little nitpick that I can come up with that I've noticed in other figure arts in years past is that sometimes in order to achieve this level of fluidity, so to speak, from the articulation is that they often kind of cut a little bit of the arm off. You can kind of see right here that it's almost like a half shoulder or like a two-thirds shoulder. And when he's placed in a neutral position like this, it doesn't look too badly. But once you kind of extend, you see how a good chunk of his arm is kind of missing. But of course, with the proportions and the scale in mind, they somewhat have to do that. So there's just something you're going to have to live with. It's really when we get a little bit more inside that you'll notice we do in, ha do in fact have a butterfly joint. And that thing is rather ridiculous because you can extend the butterfly joint towards the front like so to allow more flexibility towards the front and then a little bit towards the back but then full shrugging motion inwards and outwards so you can kind of shift everything along like you see right about right there so there's so many different degrees and angles that you can really flex this thing along in all parts and that of course goes for both shoulders so that is incredible and one of the things that really stands out about this version of the figure of course you're also going to have bicep swivels right there that fully rotate the two joints despite being mispainted there slightly again my own little uh quirk with that they do fully bend all the way upwards like so and very flexibly and it feels really good in hand to do so it never feels like it's kind of restricted 
or it's it needs some extra you know work or the paint needs needs to be weathered down or needs to be passed with a hair dryer McFarlane or even Marvel Legends but mostly McFarlane as much as I love them that's the one thing that they most definitely need to work on then we get to the ball wrist joints that even though I don't like how obvious they are for a figure of this caliber I mean you can blatantly see the ball joints there they at least allow for a full range of movement inwards and outwards like so as well as full rotation 360 degrees very comfortably then we get to the torso where we have two joints one in the middle way here that's able to fully rotate 360 although do be careful because sometimes the plastic kind of comes in the way here due to the way that the physique is constructed but you do have some slight extension towards the back like so and and slight crunching towards the middle, not much found in the mid torso, but more extension towards the front is caused by the waist joint that does not rotate, but it does allow an awful lot of oblique crunching, moving from side to side, forwards and back. So as you can see, all this range of motion is achieved via those two joints right there. And if you want to get a little bit more niche, the joint in the mid torso can kind of shift from side to side in place so you don't necessarily have to crunch it but you can kind of feel it shift from one angle to the next if you want to get all this properly aligned then we get to the legs where you can see that there's an awful lot going on <laughs> right here as uh, Toby has demonstrated in Spider-Man 3 there's always a lot going on right here but this time around figure arts of course keeping in mind with how far they go with articulation they bake that into this figure as well and I can definitely see how this could bother some people in terms of just how much sheer paneling there is going on right here especially with what I like to call the ass cheek pieces that can kind of move inwards and outwards but that's mainly there so that you can kind of retain as much as the illusion of a whole piece suit within the legs while at the same time making sure that the articulation and the movement is not compromised so the legs are able to fully move forwards about that far and then back and then backwards about that far this is honestly one of the more flexible leg joints on a figure that I've ever messed with and that's because that piece right there so that it's able to create kind of like a butt piece like Marvel Legends and McFarlane are often always doing with their figures but because of the way that it's able to rotate and kind of flip forwards and backwards here you're able to move the legs almost at a full 180 degree range as you can see right there that is immensely awesome and then of course likewise they can extend towards the sides via those cylindrical pieces there in the middle so you're able to move the legs almost just like that in all manner of capacities as long as no piece of plastic is in the way so that is amazing no pun intended and then you have thigh swivels that are a little higher than I would have liked them to be but they are found there and are fully able to rotate 360 just mine that it's a little bit more high here on this piece of the thigh so that can kind of come into some conflict with the middle crotch piece and then we get two knee joints that are similar to that of the elbow that are fully able to bend all the way up like so and are pinless they kind of blend in with the suit a little at least a little bit better than that of here because it's all one giant blue piece and because it's part of the blue section of the suit it doesn't really bother me as much as the elbows However, we do get to another bothersome piece here with the ankles because even though the ankles are on a ball joint that are fully able to pivot downwards and upwards like so and fully rotate 360 degrees very fluidly, they come with these, I almost want to say they're like rails or guards inside of the ankle right there and they just stand out to me a little bit too much like a sore thumb. I don't know why they're there. Maybe they're there to just kind of create a, a little bit extra friction to get him to stand and make sure that these legs are not too wobbly or uh, fickle but they still kind of don't help because sadly because of the way that like I mentioned before sometimes ACH figures can come off a little bit uh, floaty a little weightless they do manage to work against the figure when doing certain poses and the weight just kind of has Toby here falling all over the place so he is a little difficult to stand and I feel like these rail guards aren't really helping the issue so I don't know necessarily why they're there but at least they're not impeding the movement any further so you are able to fully flex the ankle even inwards and outwards like so as long as you get the pivoting to work and he does manage to come with toesies that are fully able to bend upwards like so so as you can see 
the joints aren't necessarily anything brand new that you might have come across in other companies figures but it's just what how they do it the method as to how they move and where they move is really what figure arts kind of excels at with almost all their figures not just with spider-man but virtually any kind of property that I tackle on it's always about what those joints can do rather than how many they are where they're at which ones did they omit omit and rather focus on just how far they can push it while at the same time making sure that the plastic is not compromised and to give you guys a bit of an idea of how far figure arts has come as far as quality and that articulation here is sh figure arts homecoming spider-man from 2017 maybe 2018 around that ballpark and as you can see it's practically night and day. Not only is he, you know, a little bit taller, and if I'm not mistaken, Toby and and, and Tom are supposed to be kind of on the same height. Maybe even Toby being a little shorter, considering now him being in middle age. And here, n beyond the scaling and the height, just look at the proportions. Look at the proportions, the quality of the plastic, the actual s sculpting. Tom just looks almost like an alien at this point with this version of the figure arts homecoming spidey from the bulbous head to the weird proportions on the muscles and everything here this is actually the figure that kind of scared me off from purchasing further figure arts and kind of guiding myself into maybe getting Mafex or other companies Figma that are willing to do a slightly better job and that's why I was a little apprehensive when they were taking on the No Way Home license and bringing us a respective Tom, Andrew and brand new Toby and it's good to see that they've come a long way as you can blatantly see right here from sculpting detail and most importantly proportions but unlike that spidey and the only area that i do feel myself kind of questioning figure arts slightly and it could be a byproduct of what the pandemic created as far as the ripple effect of production and resources and plastic and all that stuff is accessories being spidey he's going to come with some staple accessories such as web pieces you have two very small ones that you can attach to his hand as well as two much longer ones that you can also attach to kind of give him like that web shooter look and then one really long one that doesn't necessarily have any distinguishable ends like the others where you can attach it but he does come with an l shape kind of grip here towards the end so that he can fit into his hand now what hands are you exactly dealing with when handling the web accessories and attaching them to him? Well, that's actually the area where Figuarts definitely did not spare any expense. He's got a ton, a ton of hand of accessories. So let me just go down the list here. Obviously, he's going to come with the fisted hands that he came by default and he's been sporting this entire review. He's going to come with open wall crawling hands as well as the traditional Spidey thwipping web spinning hands. And then to pose with that long strand of web that he's able to hold as if he's mid swing, he comes with two what I like to call thumbs up hands, but they're technically the web holding hands because of the hole that he has in the middle. So you can fit that little L shape handle into it. But my personal favorites are the brand new two sets of hands that are very distinguishably designed just for Toby. You have one pointed hand set that is pretty much him pointing his index finger so that you can replicate the famous pointing spidey meme from not only no way home but also all of the internet and then you have what i like to call the italian hands because it looks like he's doing the italian uh me gusta you know this is i know a little offensive i'm sorry but in all seriousness these hands are actually meant to be holding hands now what exactly is he holding these hands are designed so that he can then hold a pretty much loose mask an extra mask that he has holding here and the top of the mask is actually molded and sculpted so that he can fit either one of those hands and grip it tight here at the end the inside however is kind of filled in so it kind of ruins a little bit of the illusion but this is meant to be a loose mask that he is holding after he unmasks himself and that's because he is unmasking himself using not one but two extra unmasked toby heads let's try and see if hasbro is able to beat this you sons of you have a neutral toby head that is in my opinion incredibly well sculpted this thing is absolutely beautiful can definitely see that toby's likeness is there 100 percent 
the paint decals, the sculpting, again, the nuanced little details, and, you know, for lack of a better term, the sagginess in his eyes. You know, he's supposed to be a middle-aged uh, Tobey Maguire, so I can definitely see that coming forth here, and I was even more ecstatic to see that they even threw in an extra neck piece to pull down the mask so that it doesn't look like it's just, you know, this piece right here, because often that doesn't make sense when you have the mask pulled off. The mask cut away is going to have a mid part here in the middle of the neck, so it's good to see that they still threw that in to retain a little bit of that illusion to make it seem like he's unmasked himself so that is sick and then you have a second head that is meant to be the smiling Tobey Maguire head complete with even a little bit of a nappy kind of uh, pointed hair sculpting going on here at the back to make it look like he just unmasked himself and even though that little bit of the hair is a nice little touch this is actually the only head sculpt that I'm a little a little indifferent on because on the one hand it's, it's almost like he's got a good side and a bad side, quite literally, on this face profile. Because it's actually, to me at least, the left side of his face that definitely looks like Tobey Maguire smiling there. It's once we then rotate to the right side of the head that I personally feel like we're losing a little bit of that believability. It's even the eyes that feel just a little misaligned to me. Like, it's very, very subtle. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But there's something about the right eye that's just a little higher than that of the left. And that's what's kind of killing it for me. And once I pull back, I'm like, ah, this, this is just a little funky looking. Just a little bit. Nevertheless, it still retains an awful lot of the charm that Toby was able to give us as that friendly neighborhood Spidey. And just the sheer amount of poses and ideas you can come up with by swapping these three different heads which is very easy not only for the head switching but also the hand switching even though I do advise to be careful a little bit with the hands only because of just how tiny and delicate those wrist joints really are especially with how small the pegs are it's there they could be very easy to break so just handle them with care once you do though it's just an infinite insurmountable amount of possibilities you can get with posing this figure and i think that's really what it boils down to as far as what you're paying in terms of the included accessories the sculpting of the figure the detail and everything that they try to meet the $90 price tag. It probably would have fit a little better if he came with a base. This is the concern that I was kind of uh, foreshadowing a little earlier when I was mentioning just how slim the box was. There's no display stand. Even cheap little plastic ones with the little arms so you can hold them in place and kind of just, you know, put them in a dynamic pose to make it look like he's swinging or he's mid-fight, etc., whatever. I can't imagine it to have been that big of a cost to cut it out. I feel like that would have been the icing on the cake that would have made this an easy recommend and an easy sell for a lot of people. Nevertheless, I do feel like I presented really good reasons as to why it is that these figures are being charged at around 90 to 95 dollars on major retailers and that's because you're definitely getting a much more premium quality product than that that you will find in the aisles from the likes of i would even dare say mcfarland toys or marvel legends they're going above with the sculpting the proportioning the articulation and as you can see the accessories sure the way the times have changed and to make some of these things almost a bit of a luxury when as opposed to 10 15 years ago they probably would have been a common accessory to be found in the likes of toy biz or hasbro such as the alternate heads and the web strands but at least here you know that you're guaranteed some premium quality products that look better in person as opposed to some of the photos and it also gave me peace of mind knowing that figure arts is now in a better place than they were a few years back when i purchased the homecoming spidey from them and almost kind of made me rage quit the line only now to look at Toby here and made me realize that if they can deliver the same kind of quality that we had here for both Tom and Andrew, even though Andrew's not going to come with the unmasked head, unfortunately, but at least they're cutting back on the price. They're being respective of that. They didn't maintain the same price point and they're allocating the right value. And that to me speaks volumes as to what kind of company Figure Arts is and what they're willing to deliver at the six inch scale versus their competitors. And because of that, I recommend the Figure Arts Toby Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man here. And I give him, frankly, a 9 out of 10. He kind of started off as an 8, but as the days went on and I started to maneuver with the different poses, started to then put him in some <laughs> compromising positions that I showcased here on the channel with some photos, as you guys may or may not have seen. 
I was thoroughly having an awful lot of fun messing with this figure and it's definitely one of my holy grails in my Spidey collection thus far. And if you guys are willing to look past the steep price point and pick up your own, there are going to be affiliate links in the description that you guys can use to not only get yours but also help out the channel. And if you guys want to check out another Spidey figure review, then check out the one that YouTube is recommending for you now on screen. As always guys, stay humble and I'll see you later.